Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this webinar. And uh, we would appreciate if you could just give us a short uh, message on the chat or in the questions that you can see and hear us well. All right, thank you very much. So, um, hello again, good morning or good afternoon, depending where you are, and um, welcome to this uh, webinar um, about database connections in TeamX in our Trimble mobile mapping webinar series. Um, today's webinar will be presented by my colleague, Artem, uh, from the mobile mapping support team. And I'm here, Bishoy, speaking to you from our um, office in Bibra. Uh, Germany. Uh, we wish you all uh, in good health and in good shape and taking care of yourself and we hope with this little presentation we'll give you a little entertainment for uh, your home office and um, uh, we prepared um, a very interesting topic for you today that my colleague Artem here will be presenting in uh, details and with some hands-on. So um, I let the uh, word for my colleague and he will be taking care of you for this webinar. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Bishay. Uh, my name is Artem, and uh, as Bishay said, I'm from Trimble Support uh, Engineer, and for the last three years, helping our customers mostly with uh, Trimble mobile mapping solutions. Uh, I'm glad to have you here today on this webinar about that's eighth webinar uh, of, of mobile mapping, and uh, this is about database connection in TMX. Uh, it might be uh, quite useful for your daily workflow. Uh, my colleague uh, Vincent Porter will present the same presentation later this day in order to make it comfortable for the audience uh, in, in the different time zones. Uh, well, let's start uh, our presentation. Uh, short introduction of, of, of this presentation. Uh, basically, the goal is to learn the regular workflow of a database connection in Trimble MX software. Uh, what we are expecting, you already know and learn maybe from previous uh, webinars, it's how to create and manage regular data sets in TMX standalone versions. Uh, then creating the table and defining its structure in database uh, management system, regardless of the uh, database uh, you are going to use. Uh, extract some features uh, in TMEX. Uh, that is in order to just to test your connection if if it's fine. Uh, the agenda for next hour would be. Uh, the, so some short uh, covering of uh, file data set and database data set. How does it work? Sup what, uh, what supported databases uh, in, in TMX uh, then supported database geometries in TMX? Uh, there, are, there would be a couple examples about the creation, the table in uh, database uh, point for lines and we will try to consolidate them for uh, more convenience. Then summary, and at the end, I hope we will have about 10-15 uh, minutes for your questions. Left. Well, spatial databases. What is spatial databases? In fact, this is the same database, but it's able, in addition, to contain the uh, and to store inside the spatial objects. Uh, what the uh, the database comparing to the regular data set? Uh, normal file-based data set. It has information, uh, and usually it uh, it is stored in the file, uh, standalone file, shapefile, OBF, or CSV, etc. Usually, one file is equal to one data set. Uh, what about database? That's information. Uh, and and, and the, this information is contained in the database tables. Uh, one database can contain many data sets. Uh, yeah, that's one of the benefits. 
uh, and talking about more benefits of it, uh, why people usually um, quite, quite often selecting uh, using database connection, uh, comparing to, uh, to regular data set, uh, about file data set. It's simple to prepare and simple to move, copy, paste, uh, some management, ma management locally is quite easy. About database uh, data set, first of all, and very, it's kind of safety, no need to save it. Uh, regard, uh, for example, if you have some uh, issues, software or hardware issues uh, during the uh, collection or extracting of the features and collecting them uh, into database uh, and you will have issue uh, the most of the data recently extracted will be anyway saved in the table and you will not lose your uh, job uh, your work then better sharing and better interoperability that means if for example one company one big company has a uh, shared database already existed uh, your your uh, your connection is just for feature extraction and uh, an object object and uh, attributes extraction but at the same time your colleagues from different departments can be connected to the same database and almost immediately uh, they can use your uh, your objects just extracted a couple minutes ago or uh, your table could be connected to other different tables inside. Uh, that means that uh, one database can have inside very big and advanced network of the connections between uh, tables and data inside and objects inside. The same as uh, to one database, many people can be connected with different softwares and uh, will not disturb each other. And uh, last, just note for your information, it's required to have database connection when you are going to use inventory procedure, as asset inventory procedure in TMX asset model or client server. This, uh, this uh, presentation won't cover this, but this is important to understand that, that we need it. Uh, yes, we use client server version. Well, how does it work for a normal database data set? First, preparation of the table in the database. Uh, there are a couple scenarios, creating table and add column. Uh, that would be brand new table and uh, columns you are going to, to have for collection. Second scenario, if you already have existing table or in existing database, uh, which might have already objects inside or might not. Uh, make sure that uh, it has all required columns. Uh, probably if you already have uh, existing database, uh, you will have some your, of your colleague uh, who will be a database administrator and he will, he will help you about this to find out this table. Then second, we are going to create connection to the database with the appropriate driver. Uh, the connection is basically the link between TMX and database itself. Uh, it's like to the database regardless if it's service-based database or it's stored in the uh, that, that database uh, like in the file. That is connection is a link between TMX and database. Uh, third step will be creating of ODB file to map the tables structure. ODB is kind of the link uh, to the table and define how TMX should interpret the table. Uh, and then we are going, since all these connections we already established, first step will be opening ODB uh, file in TMX like a normal data set uh, and of course test it. Uh, creating some features, collecting, and just test it. Database drivers. We are starting always from database drivers. Make sure that it works and uh, everything is prepared because this is very important to have uh, appropriate driver. Uh, a database connection requires it. Full stop. 
some drivers are, are already available by default in TMX. Uh, you can see here on the uh, on this column uh, some already available. Drivers can be also managed by the user. Uh, you could add, remove, or modify them. TMX supports all GDBC database drivers. GDBC driver sends to a uh, Java class made to access a database using SQL. That means that this driver will translate the language of the database uh, to be uh, to be uh, to be accessible by TMX. They will talk to each other uh, using this driver and understand. Uh, supported database geometries. Well, vector geometry can be stored uh, in different way, ways uh, in a database table. TMX supports separate coordinate fields. Usually you will use it uh, X, Y, Z uh, coordinates for points. Uh, objects, then quite uh, quite useful, well-known text or well-known binary. Uh, you can store here polylines, poly polygons, or points as well. Then Oracle Spatial, special extension of Oracle. In case you use Oracle database, uh, Oracle Spatial uh, would help you to store the objects uh, properly inside your database. Uh, and PostGIS as a special extension for PostgreSQL, uh, but it can be read only by TMX, but uh, TMX is not able to store objects uh, with this formatting. Uh, some more information you could find uh, with this link, uh, it's knowledge base. Uh, there are pretty, um, pretty many information about uh, the supported database geometries well uh, as i mentioned uh, and uh, it will be uh, very very useful to know well-known text and uh, well-known binary what's the difference well-known text is uh, stored as character large object it's c log maybe for some of you it's already familiar abbreviation uh, is a human readable and the this would be uh, the visualization of your object stored. It's geometry of your object. Uh, comparing to well-known binary, what the benefits uh, might be? It's stored in a, a as a binary large object below. Uh, then it takes slightly less space in case if you your data data uh, or you don't have so many objects uh, it will be uh, not that noticeable but in case you have uh, really a lot of information uh, it might work slightly faster uh, one important uh, information here is independent of uh, the character encoding and in your table it will appear as binary data uh, well Going further, it's the uh, best way to learn it's with examples. This example will cover about 90% uh, of, uh, of workflow will be applicable for any database connection you're going to use. Then please pay, pay particular attention to it. Well, this example, what we are going to do here. Uh, first, show the table structure. In our case, we are using PostgreSQL. Uh, it's not necessary these uh, this, uh, rules uh, is applicable to any database. Okay, uh, some formats of database might have some small details, but uh, this is uh, not, really, uh, not really important here. In this case, we are going to use PostgreSQL as a given. Uh, second is create a connection to the database, of course, using driver. Third, create a Orbi database file, ODB, then open and configure ODB dataset in TMX. 
uh, define coordinate system as for regular data data set then uh, then make set some settings for to change legend and save it and then extract a couple features uh, just to make sure that our connection is established well and uh, it works correctly and storing our objects in our table. What we are not going to cover is database and table preparation uh, because uh, uh, you might have a different table, uh, you might have uh, different databases, uh, it's uh, not really the topic here. Uh, uh, this this workflow as i mentioned will be applicable for uh, most of the connections you will establish in future okay uh, in order to show you table uh, for example some detail about post uh, post sql uh, all the names of the columns and of the tables should be uh, lowercase this is small detail just to mention why we use it from lowercase because it's necessary to post then this is uh, this is which columns our table our prepared table uh, contains first id x y z uh, let me pay your attention that for where in this case we are going to use point x y z uh, spatial tag and for this special tag it's mandatory to have this uh, four columns available for us. This ID, it's unique ID for uh, for each object we'll create. It should be integer. X, Y, Z will be storing the coordinates X, Y, Z, and there them should be double precision. Uh, here it's set it as primary, but uh, primary key. Uh, but for TMX, it's not really important. It's not mandatory. It's mostly for uh, how you are going to use this table in your database. Height and type, we have additional two, uh, two columns. They will be taken as attributes because they are not describing any, um, any geometry of our object and any geospatial uh, component. Well, creation of a connection to database. We should go to, of course, run TMX. We should go to preferences and database, okay? Database is over here. Then there are two tabs. First is driver, second is connection. Uh, we have already in our list PostgreSQL available. Uh, we go to driver and pressing the test. The test should be satisfactory. If it's not satisfactory, then uh, we should figure out why it's not satisfactory. Uh, but in our case, it will be satisfactory uh, because it's already default. Then we are going to create a new connection. We go to connection tab next to driver. Then we should type our name. Name uh, we, we, uh, at the list will um, initially this list uh, will be empty. We should press plus button to add new connection then type name of connection you would like to use uh, it's up to you which name then uh, in our postgresql is uh, our database is protected with user and password uh, in case you have the same just user and password should be typed here then driver select the driver we just uh, just slide ago checked and tested then for this connection since this is service-based connection, uh, we should type here the IP address of the machine where our uh, service is running. Then we should type the port uh, for our database. Uh, in PostgreSQL, uh, you can find it uh, here, right-click properties uh, for different uh, database management service it might be different location but anyway it will be available then database you should here take since we are connecting teamix to to database we we have here in database we have here the, the one database created and the name postgre uh, postgres should be taken here 
in tab here. Then we should click generate URL. What generate URL uh, is doing? Um, probably you might note that from driver settings, you have URL template. Then first part, this part will be taken from this template. Then hostname, port and database will be taken from our uh, from, from, from from this place, hostname port database, and we'll create URL uh, to be uh, as as link URL uh, for our connection. Then test result testing. If it's satisfactory, that's a very good sign, and we can continue with this connection. Uh, it's uh, nice to know that all these connections are stored. Uh, in a local app data, Trimble, uh, here it depends on the version uh, of TMX you're using, and connection XML. It will be stored and uh, will be migrating uh, regardless of the version uh, you will install. For example, if you, uh, if you uninstall and install new version of TMX, this connection will be taken uh, from, this uh, from this location. Uh, this connection XML and will be valid for new version. You should not create new. Well, let's go to our hands-on part. We are going to show table and create a connection to the database. Uh, here I have Postgre PG Admin. It's my management tool for managing my PostgreSQL database. Okay, to access it, I should type the password. And here, expand the servers. Especially for this, uh, for this webinar, I have created separate database and called it TMX objects. We should take this name in order to be used in during the connection creation. Okay. Inside of these TMX objects, we have here tables. And here points will be used by us uh, to, to create a point X, Y, Z data set. Go into properties of this table. We can see which columns I have here created. ID, X, Y, Z. You remember that these four is absolutely uh, are absolutely mandatory for X, Y, Z spatial type. Point X, Y, Z. And type is integer, double precision, double precision, and double precision. It will be taken as attribute. Okay, since we know that our uh, database is already is, is ready, our table is ready, and all columns, uh, necessary columns are ready, then we are ready to make the connection. We open our TMX. Here I have TMX. It's Asset Modeler Pro version 20. Okay. First thing, we should go to preferences and databases. Here we have our tabs. We can see that uh, connection is basically empty. We are going to create connection, but first of all, we should uh, check our driver. What GreeSQL we are going to use it and test it. Test was satisfactory. Now we are ready to go further with connection. Uh, here I have small how to. Let's assume that this how to I've got from my database administrator and Using this data, I will be using my uh, database 
uh, my, my connection to my database. Name. Let's say it will name PG test. Okay. Then description could be empty or up to you. We remember that our uh, database is, uh, is protected by password and user. It has super user by default post Greece. And my password should be input here. Driver. From the list of the drivers, we should select driver. We just uh, we just tested. Then host name. Host name I have here. Okay. Then port. And you remember this TMX objects. That is exact name of the database I have created uh, specifically for this webinar. Generate URL. Okay, URL is created. Use template from driver and test it. Test was satisfactory. Now I'm happy that it is satisfactory and my connection is established. Good. Now we can go back to our presentation. We have performed these two steps. Next, we are going to create an Orbit database file, ODB. Uh, what is the steps of creation? It create a new text file, change the extension to ODB from TXT to ODB, then populate the file. This is the format of the uh, content should ODB include. A uh, little bit more we can read on the knowledge base. And here, very, very, uh, very clear um, all the content and all the types, all the uh, coordinate models is very clearly uh, explained. The content of the ODB. Let's go briefly through it. Uh, the connection. This is the name of the connection we just created in TMX. Then false, then name false. This is name of the model. You can add, uh, you, you can use any, any name you want. Then type, it will be point, point line or area. Okay. Coordinate model, 3D or 2D. Uh, that's up to you. Then table name. Here we should take exact name of the table uh, inside from our database. We have created points here. Then object ID column should be equal and here type the exact name of the ID column. Spatial type. Uh, in first our uh, example we will be using point x, y, z. Uh, it uh, could be used only for points and uh, point x, y, x, y, z only for points. Then uh, here we could spe uh, specify also a special blob or special blob uh, to be used for points, lines, or polygons. Then spatial column x, y, z. You remember the, that this file describes the, uh, it, it say to DMX how we should interpret the table. And basically here it's guiding the DMX where our x, y, z stored, where is id. Then update mode, full control. It could be read-only when we are not able to uh, to do anything with our, like to, to do any updates. Here only updates, uh, only attribute updates could be made. Uh, only special updates. Uh, you could change the shape or location of your objects, but not attributes or full control where you can change both. Hands on part, we are going to create ODB file in my case, 
I have already prepared for you. Just do, do not uh, lose time. PG points ODB. Let's open it. And we can see that database connection PG test should be equal to my PG test in uh, in my connection uh, in my connection tab. Okay, we have it equal. Then name PG points. This is up to me. I, I would like to have this name of the model. Then type point coordinate model 3D. I would like to have X Y Z in it. Table name points. Here it's important to have it's exactly the same like we are we have in our points. Our table name points. We have to have here exactly the same name. Same for object column. The name of the uh, of the um, ID column is ID. Then spatial type. We are choosing point X Y Z because we have prepared three separate columns for X Y and Z components to describe our um, our spatial component attributes. We didn't see uh, this in presentation, uh, but might be useful. For example, if it attributes equal nothing, or there is no attributes at all, then uh, TMX will take all the rest, uh, excluding these four columns, all the rest columns will be taken as attributes. In case you have, uh, uh, if you have table with 100 columns and you will be populating only two of them, you should type the name comma separated and only these two uh, only these two columns will be taken to uh, TMX as attributes. Okay, and update mode full control. Good, we have prepared our ODB uh, ODB file. Getting back to presentation, open and configure the data set in TMX. Well, what we should do uh, in TMX. We will open as a regular uh, data set. Uh, we can open with plus button here or drag and drop the B file in TMX. Just the same like with regular data set. Then, first of all, we should go to inspect and make sure that projection is changed. Uh, it, it will be usually undefined, but we should change it to the correct coordinate system. Select browse it and after we say apply, our coordinate system uh, will be stored in newly created ORD file. It will be automatically created and here is the content of it, uh, data set, coordinate system and the code of coordinate system. Then creation of the legend. Uh, it will be taken the uh, default uh, visualization type, but we can, of course, uh, de change it uh, how we like. But here is important that we should uh, store it uh, to make extra step to store it in order to save OLG file and OS L file. Then with next uh, adding of the, our data set, this will be taken and you will not lose your visualization. Okay, hands-on part. So we're going to prepare four and fifth step. Uh, open and configure our ODB file we have created in three step. Define coordinate system and legend. And of course, extract two features. Make sure that uh, it's uh, it's properly connected and is able to, to update our table in uh, database. Okay, getting back to TMX. Okay, we don't need any more our connection. Connection is established. Then we go to our ODB and we just drag and drop here. Well, you can notice that we have already some objects 
if you, we open attribute table, we have four objects already inside of this uh, data set. That means that connection works already and it's able, TMX is able to read the objects, uh, existing objects inside the data set, inside the table. Okay, first of all, we should go data set properties and inspect in order to change projection. We can see here world, world map pattern and uh, but for example if this points been created in uh, for example utm zone 32 north we should define and you can see that it will be automatically reprojected apply okay let's get back you could see that ord file has been automatically created it is storing for this model it's storing data set coordinate system. Next time you will add this ODB, this file will be automatically added. Then, what about visualization? For example, we don't like these crosses. They are hardly visible. We go to legend editor and for example, create some diamond field. Okay, apply. Well, if we are okay with such visualization, we, uh, we can notice that once we click OK, there is no extra files appeared. That means that this legend will be uh, will not be stored. And uh, in order to store it, we should perform extra step to save this legend by default. It takes the same name as data set and same location. Save, apply, okay. What do we have here? OLG file and uh, orbit legend file and orbit uh, sign library file will appear. And now it has description for the visualization for our points. Well, now, most important part is to check if our uh, connection works and table will be fulfilled with new objects we are going to create. Let's go to tools, new object, so let's make it simple. Okay, we can see that our objects stored. Let's go to attribute table. We can see we had four objects. Then new six objects we have been created just now. Let's go to Postgre Manager points. Let's have a look on all rows. And here you, uh, you are able to see the data, the content of the table. These four we have already we had already before the presentation these newly created objects uh, x y is fulfilled with x y coordinates uh, z is zero simple reason for this is because we have created our objects in 2D map and there is no z component at all okay uh we are finished with uh with our example number one hope it will uh it was uh, clear for you then we go to example number two storing coordinates in uh well-known text well-known text can store uh, or well-known binary can store points polylines or polygons in this example, we will show the table structure because it will uh, will have the the structure prepared for well-known text uh, story. Then create or ODB file. We already know this how to create it. Uh, there are there would be some small differences. Uh, then 
open ODBs data set and TMX, define coordinate system and extract a few features. Uh, in this uh, in this example, we will be using the same connection and we will be using it for poly storing polylines. Okay, uh, we'll create a new table is prepared for uh, this data set. And which is necessary, uh, which is mandatory columns should be uh, in our table. First of all, ID, then geom as with a data type as text. This uh, column will contain all the geometry of a uh, new line or it's the same for polygon. Uh, it will, uh, in well-known text format, it will store all geometry. It's mandatory also to have the extent uh, of the object for each object and it will be stored automatically in geom min x max x uh, min y max y length and type will be taken as attribute uh, geom should be the text because this is well known text format and but here the accent will be stored in coordinates minimum x maximum x uh, and double precision is uh, should be applied. Okay. Well, uh, the creation of ODB file. Since we know that uh, we are going to use different uh, different uh, spatial type, it's not point X, Y, Z anymore. It's spatial C log. Character long object uh, log. Okay, character long object. And uh, uh, this will have slight difference comparing to the previous ODB. Uh, first of all, and uh, most important differences is, of course, the name and type. Type should be line because we are going to store the line here. Then table name, we will create new table for it. Good. Then speed object ID column. Uh, the name here is the same, but it could be different up to you. Uh, spatial type point x y z and spatial clock is different because uh, is different because here it's mandatory to have this geom uh, geom uh, mm, to 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 link TMX with spatial component uh, which will be stored in this geom column. Uh, automatically, automatically will be taken this min max, this extent. They are linked automatically by geom, by this name. You should make sure that this first part is is equal for each of the column. Okay, then spatial column type update full control is just the same. And then part. Here we are going to show our table prepared. Uh, we are going to skip uh, creation of the connection because we are, we are going to use the same uh, database and the same connection we just prepared for uh, example number one. Uh, here we are create we are going to create ODB file, then open configure ODB data set for the system legend and extract some features. Okay. Here we have lines table prepared for our lines go to properties columns we remember that for CLOP it's mandatory to have id geometry as text geometry minimum x y minimum maximum uh, y maximum x this name before this min should be exactly the same as uh this for geometry okay good let's go to odb we have pg lines odb let's have a look how it looks inside here we have connection is the same we used for previous uh for previous example then name whatever you like 
then tag it's important to have here line then or or area if you like to store area here uh coordinate model 3d table name it should be lines exactly like our table named here then object column id spatial type spatial club spatial column is geometry it's a name where we are going to store geometry attributes none and uh, all attributes will be taken and update mode full control okay we are we are ready with odb now we are ready to add our odb to teammates and check our connection pg lines appears first of all we go to inspect make sure that proper coordinate system selected okay like good let's make sure that ORD being created automatically good then we can see that one object here already appeared that means that it's properly reading the content of our existing table we can see that it's already one object here what if we'll try to make it editable and create new object would it be able to store it inside our table yeah it's storing it okay let's make sure we'll go to post grid lines new data all row here is the same we had here one object now we have three objects because two of them we just added this is listerine z with coordinates of the uh, our line uh, is stored here this is actually the format text format c log let's go and create legend for this line if we don't like it for example go with different color and make it a little bit thicker okay now if we are good with such visualization we go to legend and save it next to by default next to our odb file you can see that lines all jib been created good let's get back to our presentation we have made all these steps a uh, very small uh, third example is how to uh, consolidate many models inside one odb if you have hundreds of them it might be very very uh, useful adding them all together terminology in tmx is uh data set is more or less it's as a data source where our database or ovf or shapefile uh, whatever data source you're using then model is kind of clear and uh, like poles break lines or any other layer and one data set can contain many models what we are going to do in our example is we have one odb we have created we have second odb we have created yeah let's consolidate them into one odb for our convenience it will appear as a list of uh data set with a list of models inside what is important note here that there is only one or dnlg per data set will be created uh, and uh, it's important to have ORD can only store only uh, one uh, coordinate system for entire data set before mm, before consolidating all the data sets you uh, you have selected make sure that objects inside and coordinates inside uh, is uh, have same coordinate system for them because coordinate system will be shared by entire data set OLG will store separate legend for each model. 
Okay, let's show the combined ODB. I have here PGL, uh, PGL2. Let's open it. Here we have the same connection, exactly the same connection. Then we took from PG lines, we took this part. Then from PG points, where is our PG points? Okay, we took this part. Only difference with it is ID of the model. It should be unique for each model, okay? Now what we can do with this new created, newly created ODB? We can add it. Let's remove this and let's make this one. We are adding it. We can see that all our uh, how all, all our object been added. If we expand this, we can see that the same tables uh, been used for uh during the importation during the adding but why the location is not correct because there is no uh rdb file for this we should specify coordinate system for apply okay make sure it has now pg all two good in case we need change legend we are changing it for points, for lines. Okay, apply. Good. If we are okay with legend, we can store it. We can store it. Good. Now we have uh, created. Let's create a couple objects just to make sure that. They can be stored properly. Okay, lines is working. Lines working and points working as well. Good. Let's get back to the presentation. Uh, summary. Uh, what we did basically, we went through the uh, how our table in our database should be uh should, what 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 parts should contain our table then created a connection with correct uh, driver then we created odp file uh then supported databases basically that's any any databases as long as you can configure a gdbc driver for it supported uh geometries database geometries it's xy uh, Z, well-known text, well-known binary, Oracle Spatial, Post uh, GIS. And example we have covered, we have created points stored in XYZ, polylines stored in, uh, in uh, well-known text, same you can do with polygons, and we have consolidated into one ODB file uh, both of them. Okay, I'm Happy to say that we have reached uh, our question section. Uh, in case you have some, uh, we will be happy to answer them. Um, All right, so um, thank you, Artem, for the great presentation. Um, Indeed, a very uh, heavy topic we had today, and we hope you enjoyed the detailed instructions that we have. And uh, we are ready for any questions. Please use the questions tab and send us um, if you like to know more about any part of the presentation. And of course, as you know, there will be um, a recording of this presentation sent to everyone, all the attendees, uh, by tomorrow um, with the link to the recording. All right, so I have a couple of people asking about the recording and um, yes, indeed, this will be sent tomorrow to everyone by email. 
Um, I have a question here. Does CMEX have its own database format? Um, no, TMEX does not have a database format, so uh, we only have and support the, uh, the global known formats like SQL, like Oracle, um, SQLite also, uh, Microsoft Access, but these are more on the uh, file-based databases. Um, but no, TMEX does not provide its own database format. There is no such a thing, but it has, of course, as you know, the vector file format, which is just an OVF file. A question on the pre previous links for the webinar. Uh, the previous webinar so uh, you can find this on our uh, YouTube channel so this will be the uh, if you search on YouTube for the Trimble mobile mapping um, you'll find our channel there with all the previous webinars um, I think one to eight or one to seven Um, we had a question here, uh, do you have to use TMEX for doing this or is it possible to import your extractive features in TBC and use the GIS module functionalities there? Um, so we're just showing today for you how this works inside TMEX, how you can establish a connection to a database inside TMEX and store features there. Um, it's up to you how you would like to pull the features from the database later. So you could pull the features from QGIS, for example, ArcGIS or TBC. You can use any other um, external software, third-party software, to pull the features that you have stored from TMEX and pull them from that database. And that's the beauty of the um, database connection and data interoperability that we're showing today. That um, once you have a central storage for your features or for your objects, then you can pull them from any third-party software that can communicate with this database. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? Maybe? So, seems like we have nothing more. Well, then probably we can wrap up this webinar. Yep. I really hope that it will help you in future and uh, it will be useful. Then enjoy this possibility to, to, to make the creation and to use your data set, databases. That's quite useful. All right. So I think we've reached the end of today's webinar. So again, I would like to thank all of you for coming here today and we would really like to see you again in the upcoming webinar. So please stay updated um, from the uh, GDN updates. You'll always get a link uh, or from our distribution channels for the upcoming webinar series episodes. And um, we wish you all good health and stay safe and um, take care all of you and have a rest, a nice rest of the day. Thank you all. Take care. Thank you very much.